Do you want to master project scope management at a professional level? Then give me a few minutes and I'll explain everything you need to know. First of all, why it's important to master project scope management. There are certain projects that you will simply fail if you don't know the best practices of project scope management. Let me give you an example. Imagine you work in a medium-sized company and one day you are assigned to an internal project to modernize the tools and software you use in the organization to improve productivity. The key here is that you have a business need, a limited budget and an approximate deadline. And that's it. There are no concrete requirements, there are no internal experts who already have at least some ideas. You need to find a way to meet that business need. So let me show you how to use project scope management processes and tools to break down the business need into individual tasks. So, project scope management aims to identify all the tangible and intangible elements of a project and the work required to produce them. So, first we need to break down the business need into project goal and measurable objectives. This should be definitely more specific than just improve productivity. They should describe what the project success looks like. Unfortunately, there is no special process or tool here. You must communicate with your project owners and key stakeholders, asking them questions to discover concerns they had while forming the business need. This should help you form a vision for the main project's tangible result. Is it a new project management tool? Or must we digitalize some parts of the business? Or do we want to create a new solution or purchase an existing one? So there might be dozens of opportunities to improve productivity. For the sake of this video, let's assume project owners believe that a project management tool will improve productivity. Moreover, because our business model is so unique, we need to create a new tool for ourselves. You see, as a result, we narrow down the project goal from anything that will increase productivity to a custom project management software tailored to our specific needs. Again, notice how much the project's idea has improved since we started. But without this first step, you may have pursued the wrong solution, which is how a project fails right from the start. But here's a question I would like you to think about. What if no one knows what the project's tangible results should be? What should you do in this case? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. All right, next you want to capture all this information in a project charter, which will ensure that everyone in the organization is on the same page about the project goal. After that, you need to identify requirements for the product you need to create in order to reach those specific measurable objectives mentioned in the project charter. Here you will work with internal people, subject matter experts, and maybe some external consultants to identify features and capabilities that can make our PM software useful for our people and our business. Here's a critical point that even experienced project managers miss. At this point, we collect stakeholder requirements. These requirements describe what the end users want to see in our product. These are not the solution requirements that we give to our engineers when creating the product. We'll do it a bit later. Stakeholder requirements describe features and capabilities on a high level. You can apply all available business analysis and requirements identification techniques, such as interviews, brainstorming, questionnaires and surveys, document analysis, focus groups, competitor analysis, prototyping, observations, and workshops. You may also need to create a requirements traceability matrix. This will help you manage, triage, and prioritize all the requirements, especially if you have many of them. After you have collected all the stakeholder requirements, you will create a project scope statement. And this is a critical moment. Remember that we started the project with just a vision of the final outcome. Now we need to compile all our findings and explain what we'll do to all stakeholders. 
So in the scope statement, we describe what kind of project management software we plan to develop. Project stakeholders need to approve the project scope statement. This will indicate that they understand the project and agree that producing these deliverables will allow us to achieve project's objective. Most of the work here is on project manager. That's because you must explain the work in simple terms to all stakeholders. So you'll write a document and present it to key stakeholders. Next, we'll take our vision of the project outcome and major deliverables from the scope statement and we'll start creating the work breakdown structure. This tool allows us to identify all tangible pieces of the project we must produce. In addition, we'll start breaking down stakeholder requirements in into smaller pieces and describing them in more detail. You work with business analysts or product owners to generate solution requirements. The main types of solution requirements in the IT industry are software specifications or epics and user stories. The next step is to click the like button if you find this video useful. Take your time, I'll wait here. The requirements traceability matrix continues to be the central piece here. You'll find many great ideas, but not all of them will help you reach the project's objectives. The matrix will help you prioritize only the requirements supporting your project's goal. Additionally, RTM will connect requirements with deliverables, ensuring stakeholders can validate each requirement in a specific deliverable. And it will help you control the work and ensure that stakeholders are happy with the product we develop. To identify the solution requirements, create a work around structure and create requirements traceability metrics, you have to participate in hundreds of meetings, thousands of emails and Slack threads, interviews, brainstorming sessions. It's a lot of work. And in most cases, you will either apply a rolling wave planning technique, which allows you to stretch all these processes throughout the whole project lifetime or you will use an agile framework to develop the product iteratively and incrementally. By the way, I teach all that in my online course. Nevertheless, in both cases, here's what happens under the hood. You break down your deliverables from WBS into smaller pieces, which we call work packages. Then we take each work package and break it down into tasks. After that, you describe each task, estimate it in all aspects and connect all the required information. And here's the big idea. Once you implement all child tasks, you must get a fully finished parent work package. All right, in the long run, you assign all these individual tasks to team members. They do the work while you track what it takes to finish each task. Then you sum it up and control the overall project's progress at the work package level. And then you sum it up to the deliverables level. Now here's a critical moment. Once you have finished a work package or a complete deliverable, show it to the project owners and ask them to sign off. This means they formally agree that the deliverable is of the required quality and works according to the requirements. Alternatively, they will ask you to change the deliverable or they will find a defect that you must fix. And here you must control the scope and ensure that these changes align with our initial project goal. You must also perform project change management in case the project owners approve a change. All right, so you implement work packages and deliverables one by one until you have implemented everything in the work breakdown structure and stakeholders accepted all these deliverables. All of this is theory of project scope management, but it might be hard to visualize or imagine how these processes look in the real world. That's why I recommend that you watch this video next. You'll get a real world example of proper scope management. Please click the video now.